got some scriptures this morning out of the 12th chapter of Luke, which about all of you may be familiar with these, but I want to sort of use this as a coat hanger to put my message on this morning. And uh, in Luke chapter 12, and start reading in verse 16. I'll read my scripture and I'll ask Brother Bean to lead us in prayer. And the Bible says in Luke 12 and 16, He spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I'll pull down my, down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thy food, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So it is he that layeth up treasure for himself is not rich toward God. We back up into the 11th chapter of Luke. And we see that how Jesus brought several wolves against the Pharisees. And here we see that after He had done all of this, He spake this parable unto them about this man here. As we look at this parable, we find down through it, The word I is used about six times in these scriptures, and my is about five times. But as we look in these scriptures, we can't find nowhere that he put God in what he had or what he was thinking. And you know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7, The fear of the Lord is a beginning of knowledge, but fools despite wisdom and instructions. You know, we are living in a time that there is no reason why any would should not be able to recognize God's wonderful Word. Many people in this world is leaving God out just like this man did. And as we see the hymn, God called this man a fool. We find that the Bible tells us, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 22, that the word fool is something that we need to use very lightly when we are talking. But I'll tell you what, as we look into the Word of God, God, what He calls a fool, is a fool indeed. And this man had left God out of his life. He said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But he didn't realize that that night he's going to be called out in eternity. You know, I don't care how healthy we might think we are. It don't matter how wealthy we think that we are or how many times we go to church. We need to be prepared and ready to leave here at any second. As we go on through the Word of God, I want us to look in the Bible and see some of the people that God calls a fool. The fool, first of all, is the ones that denies God. 
we see in the psalmist said in Psalms 14 and 1, it said, The fool had said in his heart, There is no God. I want to tell you, this is a fool indeed, according to the Word of God. How in this world can anyone not recognize that there is higher power somewhere? As you and I, we can look out into the world and we see the moon, we see the stars, we see the sky, we see the storms come, the storms go, and the rain come, the snow come, sunshine and all of those things. And we got to know as we look at the creation out there that there is a God somewhere. But many times people just flat denies God in many, many ways. There is also a fool, according to the Word of God, walks in the darkness. That is those that has rejected Jesus Christ and, uh, and just living right along like everything is all right. Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 2 and verse 14, The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that once event happened to them all. There's a time that those that is so saved as have walked in the darkness and not in the light. And Ecclesiastes was a man recognized himself that one time that he walked in the darkness instead of the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. The kind of food that chooses to live in the dark rather than the light. And he chooses to walk with the devil, what it means, rather than the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you, this world has got many, many of them in it, and they're walking towards destruction, and they're not paying no mind to it all. And there is the deceived food. I tell you, there are a lot of people in this world is deceived. And they are deceived by the devil, and he is going the wrong way. Uh, Galatians 6 and 7, the Bible tells us, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. He said, For whatsoever from a man soweth, that he also shall reap. You and I, we see in the Bible, and the Bible teaches us that sin will not go unpunished. And he said, don't be deceived about this. I've seen people do a lot of things that was contrary to the Bible. And some of them say, well, God knows I need to do this and I need to do that. I want to tell you, God does not tolerate sin He'll fix it in a way that you and I can make ends meet and everything else. The Bible said in Proverbs 12 and 15, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkened unto counsel, he said he's wise. In other words, he is saying that man's ways are not God's ways, and God's ways are not many a man's ways. And so we must keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ under all circumstances. As Brother Don's Sunday school lesson this morning, it was pointing the same direction and I'm trying to point to you here this morning. God is the one and the only one. And in the time of trouble, temptations, and trials, and sickness, and even just a manner of life you and I live, we need God every step of the way. And there's many people in this world that the Bible calls a daring fool. This is the ones that play with sin and think they're going to get away with it. Proverbs 14 and 9, he tells us that fools make them all get sin. But among the righteous there is favor. I'll tell you, there are people in this world, they get a joy out of instigating the things that, uh, that goes on in this world and all the sin that it is. But your and I's job is to stand up against it and not get involved in it. 
He said, among the righteous there is favor. You know, a lot of people sit and laugh at this and laugh at that. Sin is no laughing matter, I tell you right now. God don't like it, and I don't like it, but many people seem like they little to commit it. And there is the daring food. The ones which the Lord Jesus spoke of in my text, He said, I'll say to my soul, he said, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat and drink, and be merry. What he was going to do, he just going to rear back and retire and take it easy. I remember when I first got into the ministry, I was at Washington Avenue Baptist Church. There was a man that uh, worked down in Nashville. He was a, some kind of contractor or something or other. And it was his last day on the job. And his wife was a pack and they was fixing to go on a vacation. And he was down there to pick up his check. It was his last day. He was going to retire. He went up and got his check and come back down. And when he got to his car, he got a hold of the door handle and he fell dead. It didn't seem like a thing wrong with a man, but he died. He was planning on retiring that day. And they, but he didn't make it. And this man here, he was going to retire and take life easy. He said, But God said unto him, Thy foe, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. And then he said, Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? We look in the book of Ecclesiastes and we find him. He was a man that tried everything under the sun. And God had blessed him and blessed him and blessed him. But when he got down to the end of the line, he realized how bad that he had been. He recognized the only thing that mattered was God in his life. And as you and I, we should be feeling the same way. The food that the Bible said, uh, he said, Blessing are the dead which die in the Lord. And then he went on, as we see, this is a food that dies without the Lord, is in my text. He died just thinking of himself and nobody else and not even Jesus. Uh, when God makes a way that we could have eternal life or maybe have a blessed life in this life, we may have it so much better. And many, many people in this world, they'll turn it down and they'll take hold of things of the world and the Bible, as we back up in the Scriptures, uh, He tells them how that uh, uh, as we go on over in the Scriptures, He said, but rather seek you the kingdom of God and all these things will be added into you. Then He said, uh, and then God, He said that the Pharisees considered, uh, He said, that they considered all these things of the world. And God knew that they had need of this all time. And He knows what you and I need in life. And He'll provide what you and I need in life if we'll just only put Him first in our life and He'll supply the need. Uh, I know that when I first got into the ministry, uh, uh, I was called, uh, I mean, I was preaching uh, day and night. I was preaching in homes and churches. And there were, we went to almost collapse several times. I was just, we was on the road solid, me, my wife, and the singers we had. Uh, but you know, God provided her needs. He provided us a vehicle. I preached for six months up and hanging limbs, 62 mile round trip, trip going up there and back. And I made about, uh, about $30 a week, I mean a month up there. And I stayed up there a long time uh, preaching to those people. And God spared my light bill. He spared all their food. He spared us a car to go. He spared us gas to go out on the field. And he and I looked back one day. I said, how in the world all this come to pass? I didn't have, even have a job. I was going on what those people gave me in that church. And it was very little. 
nothing. And I'm telling you what, God, he just kept a multiply and a multiply. And I ain't been without a car since I got saved. And I ain't I never failed to pay a light bill. I ain't never failed to pay a phone bill or a water bill. We have, I have never been broke, but I've been awful low on finances. But I have never failed a bill. And I tell you, God will and how provided for me. And we worry and worry and worry. And they have people got more mind appointed on the virus in this world and they have Jesus Christ. I remember when the 9-11 come, the churches wouldn't hold the people that swarmed in. Boy, they was forming the house of God and the churches would have grown and as soon as they got settled down, right back out in the world they went again. i tell you that ain't the way that God wants His people to work. He wants us to stay on the foreign line every day and serve Him. But as we go on, this man was going to die and he's going to die without Jesus in his life. Bible said in Luke 12, 34, For where your treasure is, that will be your heart be also. Luke 12, 21, So is he that leth up treasure for himself is not rich toward God. Luke 12, 17, And he thought with himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestore my food. I tell you what, if we got more than we need, we need to help somebody that ain't got nothing. That's what the Bible says. Isaiah 57, 21, There is no peace, saith my God, into the wicked. You know, it is no, it's no difference for us really in this world the way we have treated God. I sort of believe that this is just nothing but the judgment of God. All these things are happening. Some of the oddest things a man ever heard of going on. It's happening. We don't know how to turn it around. We're trying to find ways when the only way is to God. When you turn to Him and fully trust in Him and focus on Him and try to serve Him and try to win souls, I'm telling you, God will bless it. Amen. I have no doubt in my mind. And this man here, my this and I that. What did the Bible say when we think that we're standing and take heed lest you're going to fall? Right when you think you got it made, that's when some hardship going to hit. And it can hit, God knows how to hit where it hurts. And it will. Sin will catch up with us. It is plumb scary when you see some people, how they live their lives, and so loose, knowing that there's a God, and there's a better way out. And that is Jesus Christ. Shouldn't leave him out of nothing. Pray about every matter. As Brother Don taught in his Sunday school lesson this morning, pray for every matter. Regardless how big or how little. And a lot of times there's things be curved off and be to stay out of our way that we're headed for if we don't. It solves a lot of problems when you serve God and pray. He'll protect you because He can use you in His work. I tell you, I hope there's something in this this morning that will help you. I tell you, we are living in a terrible time. And it's time that people wake up and serve God. And those got problems in their lives turn it over to the Lord because we can't handle them I know sometimes we try to manpower ourselves and take care of them but we can't and I tell you it was just like the vaccine they got out now I hate to mention things like it but you know what that is not more than a shot of water if God ain't in it 
If God don't bless it, it won't do no good. It's God does the healing. Trusting in Him, putting faith in Him, and I'm not saying don't go to the doctor or nothing like that, because He advised us to do what you and I can ourselves. But we don't put our trust in that, we put our trust in God. A lot of people teach us that uh, don't even go to a doctor or nothing else, he's going to heal you. I tell you, I ain't going to do that. Because there are doctors in the Bible that gave instructions. Jesus is the one, the great doctor, to take care of things you and I or nobody else can take care of. He must bless it. 